Pastor Dave's up in Lantana today, and I'm pleased to say that uh, congregation, both the gang that we started with and new people that have started coming are in good spirits. Uh, we're praying for people from our own congregation here to join them uh, one Sunday a month, two Sundays a month if you can, and help build up a sort of sense of uh, um, momentum there as we go through this building time. And I hope that uh, you'd consider that. We certainly would miss you here, but it's, it's a really good experience to be up there. It's a, it's a place that's just getting its uh, legs under it, and it's exciting, and the people are, are great. And uh, they're really funny. They, they shake everybody's hand in passing the piece. So it takes about 45 minutes. To, no, it doesn't. It takes a while. Love is why we're here is our theme for the next two months. And in a way, it is another way of capturing our mission statement at Advent, which is to share the love of Jesus Christ. This is the mission statement we've had. Can we have an echo here, Kathy? We have a, an echo. To share the love of Christ in a way that uh, we've done it in countless ministries here. Uh, the congregation... Uh, too small of a sanctuary there. So in order to reach more people, we built this building. And, and then we went down and decided to get involved in early childhood education. We still have it. We had elementary school, middle school, the senior living center. Who has a new resident? Carol Fedak over here, our newest Advent Square lady. And then our missions to Haiti which I'm pleased to say is uh, improving the political climate there. We're hoping that we'll be able to begin mission teams again in January. We're also looking at the ministries that we do in human trafficking, anti-human trafficking ministries. Just about anywhere that someone might have a hope or a hurt, Advent has made an effort to be a part of it and to share the love of Christ in that situation. So this shouldn't sound strange to you to say that love is why we are here. It's always been the focus, and I hope that it will be even a greater focus over these next years to come, especially as we expand our reach now to the community in Lantana. It's so important for us to take a moment to treasure our heritage in Lutheran understandings of the gospel. I know not everybody here is Lutheran, um, but it's part of our foundation as a congregation. And so I think it's important to just take a moment to say Lutherans are a little bit strange when it comes to love, when it comes, in fact, to any good thing that a person can do. Because Lutherans insist on what we believe the gospel insists, and that is we do nothing good on our own. Nothing. You can attempt anything on your own, and you will infuse sin into it. That's the human state. Everything that I try to do on my own, I botch up. Andy always finds a way to get something out of even the, the nicest possible thing that I could do. There's always an interior motive. There's always something that I bring into it that, that in a sense... Um, might not be visible, but inside poisons it, because that is the state of human existence, anything I do. But fortunately, that's not how we have to live, because Christ lives in us, and it is what Christ does through me that is good. Amen? And he all the time shocks me, and perhaps you as well, in taking me and using me for some kind of good purpose. Sometimes I didn't even mean 
to be good. But he has worked through me to do good. Lutherans always start with God's action. God so loved the world that he said to the world, if you do everything that I want you to, I'll love you. No, he didn't say that. God so loved the world, he sent his son to die for us, asking nothing of our merit, our worth, nothing about us deserving it. He did it because he loves. And this is the kind of love that Lutherans hold on to and cherish. Not that other Christians don't have it, but one of the things that sometimes can happen in other forms of Christianity is a sort of adding up of the good things I do. And isn't it great that I do all these good things? And don't you think God thinks better of me? It makes sense. That's how the world works. If I work hard, my boss thinks better of me, right? If, if, if the house is clean when my wife comes back from the women's retreat, my wife thinks better of me, right? If only my little dog would stop marking, I would be in great shape. But that's not how it works with God. He loves first. He loves you exactly the way you are. Sinner, who he turns into a saint by his love. And not just once, not just the day you raise your hand and say, I want to follow Jesus. Every day, all the time. At the beginning of this service, in the middle of this sermon, anytime you need it, he will come with his love to change you so that you can love. Without him, we cannot. We do not, and we will not. And so love starts with God. It starts with God loving us. It, this isn't so hard to understand. Um, anybody who had a child, um, instinctively, when you hear the child cry in the middle of the night, what do you do? You go to the child. Now, of course you're bleary-eyed and worn out, and there is always going to be a sense of re resentment. I want... Kathy, we got a lot of feedback still. You're going to have to turn maybe the pulpit mic off or something. We, we have an amazing blessing that when we're crying, someone comes. The baby doesn't deserve it. The baby may not even really need it. <laughs> but mom or dad come running. It's not so hard to imagine um, if, if during a windstorm your, part of your neighbor's fence was to tilt over. It's not so hard for you to imagine maybe going over there and asking them if you could help them prop it up a little bit, right? That doesn't really blow your mind, right? You probably would do that or some other variation. You might have done something to help people get ready for the hurricane. Didn't, didn't uh, cause you, you didn't have to get on your knees and pray for the, the, the uh, uh, will to do that. You just like did it. You just do it. And you might have done it even if the neighbor was a lousy neighbor. You just do it. So it's not hard for us to imagine that, that God can do that for us. That, that whether we deserve it or not, and we never deserve it, that God will come running. That God's love will be there for us. And this is the source of of our love. Love is why we're here means that God's love is why we exist, why we have life and breath. And God's love is also what we're to share with the world. And when we experience God's love, we change. And, and you may have touched on this last week, but I just was enjoying going back to the story of Zacchaeus the wee little man, remember? The wee little man was he, climbed up in the... Mary, you know, right? Mary Louise knows it. Wanted the Lord to see, and as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree, and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down, because I'm going to your house today. Now, when I first sang this song here, Sally Whitney pulled me aside and said, Pastor, 
Um, we don't say, you come down. That's not polite. We say, please come down. <laughs> And I thought, maybe Jesus would have been polite, but, but in any case, come down. Why was Zacchaeus up in a tree? Um, I don't think it was because he couldn't see personally. I think it was because he was afraid to get beat up. Because he was a tax collector. People didn't like him. If he was standing in the crowd, it would be a perfect opportunity to give him, you know, a little of this and a little of that. So he's up in the tree for his own safety. Jesus says, come down where it's not safe. Walk with me. I'm going to your house. And I'm going to do something. I'm going to change your life because I'm going to sit at the table with you. There could be no worse thing a good Jewish leader could do than sit down to eat with a tax collector. And that's what Jesus is going to do to show his love. Zacchaeus is a baby in a tree, and Jesus is coming, running, to show his love. And what's great about this is that, is that we see immediately what happens when someone truly experiences God's love. It's fresh like spring. You want to sing. You want to pass it on. Does everybody know what that? <laughs> he changes. He's transformed. He's like, oh, I can't believe this happened. It's like all of the, the self-hatred I've had, all the people hating me, all this fake life that I've had where I've got money but no friends, I, that life is, he, he looks right beyond it. He saw me. He saw my need. He heard me crying in the middle of the night, and he's sitting down at my table. Lord, if I wronged anybody, I'll pay him back. I'm, I'm giving half this away right now. He just changed. He didn't do that to get Jesus' love. He did that because he had Jesus' love. And that's the right order. That's the order. We can never forget God's love first. Then we can't help ourselves. You've probably seen that commercial where somebody does something nice for someone, and then in the very next scene, that person's doing nice, something nice for one. It can be infectious. To be loved can be infectious. Be careful. It's viral. When you know that God loves you, you have a hard time not loving other people, not responding to other people's needs. I heard a, 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 guy, about a guy this morning. I don't know if he's a Christian, but I heard he's been um, committing himself to doing good deeds for about four years. Have you heard about this guy? Apparently, a homeless woman came up to him at a gas station and asked for a ride. He refused her, and he was convicted to his core that he should have done something for her and decided, I will not say no when needs come up again. He's done all sorts of creative things, including this week giving his kidney to a person who needed it. You got to be careful. When you know God's love, you start to get crazy. Well, you already know that. You know that. You're crazy just for getting up this morning and coming here. When you know God's love, we love because he first loved us. Say that together with me. We love because he first loved us. We love because he first loved us. This is the gospel. And, and what comes next? The good news that just shakes us to the core and makes us just want to love too. Love him just as the baby who sees the mom or dad come into the room just loves that they came running. And, and then to love others. When we find it difficult, what we have to do is tap back into the love resource, right? When we're having trouble loving someone, we just need to do one thing. Remember how loved we are. Remember how loved we are. You know the story of the man who was forgiven a great debt by the king, a great debt, and then turned around and held it against someone who owed him a small amount. He just didn't remember the great debt that he had been forgiven. We gather together on Sundays. We get on our knees to remember the great debt, death for all time versus life forever. And then we love. Then we love again. Then we can love. We love because he first loved us. And we pray. 
Love is why we pray. I don't think that people pray to someone that they're afraid of. I don't think that's a prayer. It might be a plea. It might be a bargain. Ever made a bargain with God? The kind of prayer we're talking about here is a prayer of someone returning to the one who gave them everything and saying, thank you. I love you. Use me. Help me. Guide me. There's no bargaining. There's nothing of, if I do this, God, will you do that? No, that's, that way has passed. That's not a relationship of love. That's a, that's a contract. That's not what we have with God. We have a love relationship with God. And so our prayers are prayers that flow out of the love we've experienced. They're a way of expressing our love. Our love. Now, I know that um, love and um, prayers and thoughts have been, um, some people have been frustrated in the news lately, um, saying, we don't need your thoughts and prayers, like after a, like a massacre, we've had so many, right, shootings. Some people have started to say, we don't need your thoughts and prayers. We need action. We need action, whatever the case might be. Might be. I understand that. It can be easy for us to say, I'll pray for you, right? I'll pray for you, I'll pray for you. And not only do we forget to pray, but it didn't really mean anything to begin with. It's sort of like saying good morning. But let's not give up on the power of prayer. I will tell you, Kim Bell will tell you, please don't stop praying for her. Because she has been feeling it. She's been feeling those prayers, strengthening her, surrounding her. Because of her treatment, she can't be around us. It's not good for her immune system to be challenged by us. So, and, so she can't be with us, but she feels the prayers. Keep praying. Thoughts and prayers can be an easy, polite thing to say, but prayers make a difference. Prayers matter. Keep praying. Keep praying. And do all you can. And we'll talk about that in the weeks to come. Now, I wanted to make this kind of practical and not just theoretical, and that is, um, inside your bulletin, you'll find a little booklet, nothing fancy. Love is why we pray. We pray for our others, for ourselves, for each other, for the world, for God's will. And then First John, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. He hears us, always listening. He will answer according to his will, but he hears us. And inside, you'll see four columns. What would be great for the preacher to do is say, go home and fill this out. But I know better. I know Steve Becker. He's going to go home and he's going to think about this a lot. But he's going to forget to write anything down. So today we're going to write down in church. We're actually going to write things down in church. So grab a pen. And if you're all tech all the time, get your memo pad out. You can do it on your phone. You don't have to do it on this piece of paper. I don't mind. First, I'm going to ask you to take a couple minutes to think about prayers you need for you. And you're like, oh, pastor, one thing I know about Lutherans, we never ask for anything for ourselves. That's a big mistake. When you get on the airplane, what do they say to you about the oxygen masks? Yours first. Why, you can't do any good for anybody. Too often we forget to pray for ourselves. It's not selfish. It's brave. It's courageous. Write down some prayers you need right now for yourself. Patience, um, hope, strength, a softer heart. I want you to write down four or five of those right now. Just write them down. What do you need from God today, the God who loves you? Hey, so... I encourage you, if you sign up for the 72 hours of prayer, to pray for yourself during that time. But any other time, you, you might want to take this and, and you want to put this in a place that you'll remember it, you know. Maybe tuck it into your mirror uh, when you get up in the morning so you can see. And, and these are not selfish things, friends. We have to get our oxygen mask on so that we can help others, so that we can love others. 
Now, far easier for most of us is praying for others. In fact, that's the, the greatest focus I think that we have, which really think about it, uh, sets Christians apart in, in a really interesting way, right? I mean, what other avenue do you have if you don't believe there's a God listening? What do you have for someone else? All, all you can say to them is, I'm thinking of you. I'm thinking of you. That's, that's nice. That is super nice. I mean, hey, better than nothing. But what, when a Christian can say, I'm praying for you, means I'm thinking and I'm bringing God into the equation. I'm bringing God into your situation. One thing we found out is that as people have become less um, institutionally religious, less worship attendance oriented, less interested in, in the, the churchy things, one thing doesn't seem to fade, and that is people still ask for prayers. People still appreciate prayers to be prayed for. People even who don't uh, share our faith don't mind at all that we would pray for them. So I want you to think about the needs of some others. This is what oftentimes you put on your cards anyways when you turn them in. Pray for some others. Maybe take a minute now and what are some prayers you have for others in your life? Praying for others is not the least you can do. We can always do more. The hot meal is very much appreciated. The cards, the, the kind gestures as well. But, but praying is an action. It's an act of love. So I'm sure you didn't have enough time to list everybody uh, that you would like to pray for. But treasure these as you pray over these next weeks. Now, I got a call uh, on the phone from... Uh, person I hadn't met before last week, and uh, this person said, uh, hey, I'm flying over to the Bahamas, and uh, I'd like to connect with your church to uh, see what your church can do to help with the uh, needs in this one particular place that hadn't really been um, reached by the Red Crosses and the Good Samar the Samaritan's Purse places. This, this was a very small island. It's called Moores Island, 400 population or so. But the population had swelled because it's, near the, it's in the Abaco Island area, and that meant a lot of people who had fled the storm or the aftermath of the storm had ended up there, so their population had tripled on an island like that. That's not easy. And... Uh, what this person who called me didn't know is that the, the night before, I had just made a passionate appeal to some folks about supporting our work in Haiti. And, and the first thing I'm like, when I, I got the phone, I was like, oh, no, not another thing. I told you Andy's a sinner, right? Oh, no, not another thing. Not another need. Not another problem in this world, right? How often do you think that when you hear it? Is it hard? It is hard. It is hard. You hear this problem, that problem, this problem, that problem, and you're like, you know, of course you can't do it all. But, but I had to ask myself while I was in this conversation, I can't do it all, but can I say no to this? The Bahamas are our neighbors. Love your neighbor as yourself. How could you say no to your neighbors? So, of course, I didn't. I said, well, you... Take me and Pastor Dave over there so we can check it out. We'll bring food with us because it so happens that our church is already collecting, as you can see in the narthex. And I just want to share with you that the congregation has been incredibly generous already to collecting for the Bahamas. And we're going to work uh, with uh, Moore's Island. We're going to support the, the development work that places like Food for the Poor will do when they come in and and help people rebuild their lives. And I just want to thank the person who called me for being a crazy pilot who heard the needs of some people and flew over and took two crazy pastors who he made a very clear point that our combined weight total meant we had to reduce the supplies that we brought with us. 
I've never been told to lose weight uh, in quite that way. We went over there and smiles on the faces of people who um, knew we couldn't fix everything, but knew one thing, they were not forgotten. When they heard that plane landing, they knew someone out there cared. And we will continue to care. In the weeks ahead, we're going to continue to collect and and serve. There, There are needs all over the world. All over the world. And Advent's been good about listening to those needs. We can't do it all. But I would like you to take a few minutes now. And, and where in the world, where in the world is your heart called to love? What places, what, what circumstances, what situations in the world? Take a few minutes and pray. What prayers will you want for the world? And now comes the tough part. The tough part that comes from the inspiration we have when Jesus said to his heavenly Father, if you can let this cup pass from me, but not my will, thy will be done. Prayer can change things. They say the biggest thing that changes is the heart of the one praying. All of us, all of us have some challenges in our lives that we know are not in tune with God's will. Maybe we've got a grudge against someone that we've never been able to let go. And, and we nurture that periodically, remembering how much we were hurt for it. Maybe, maybe, we, maybe we did something that we'd rather no one ever know about, that we're ashamed of, that we need to, to turn over to God. Maybe we find our, our hearts being turned to stone by the needs of others. Maybe uh, there's anger inside. Jesus didn't always make it easy, did he? He said, if someone strikes you in the right cheek, turn the other cheek as well. It's easy, he said, to love your friends, but you must love your enemies. He said to to take not the seat at the front of the table, the top of the table, the seat of honor, but the seat of the servant. To give all that you have to those in need. To love is not natural in these cases. We might be able to love our own, but to love others, especially those who've wronged us, is hard. For prayer to truly be powerful, we can never End it without the words, thy will be done. So I'd like you to take a minute, and this may have to be the most confidential thing. Maybe you can't even write it down. Maybe you have to, to leave yourself a little code there. But, but put down a few things under God's will that you would like God to work on in your life. That you'd like God to change about you or about this world. That, that, that you would like to see his will be done. So love is why we are here. It's why we exist and it's why we're together seeking as a church, as people of God, to share that love with the world. And love is why we pray. We are so loved that it is like a cup filled to the brim and then more added. Love poured into us so that we can let it pour out. First, to pour out upon ourselves, to put our oxygen mask on and and take the pure oxygen of God's love for ourselves. Then to pray for others, and it's not the least we can do. It all begins and ends in prayer. 
to pray for the world so that, that we broaden our view and don't just think of the things closest to us but the needs around us and not to get overwhelmed with them but to be inspired by the fact that we can, by God's grace, be a blessing to the world. And finally, to pray for God's will to be done in, in whatever circumstance, whether it's in our life or others, that it be done because God's will is best. God knows what's best. None of these prayers curry favor with God. None of these prayers earn anything. None of these prayers can demand anything. But they're all the conversation of a loved child with a loving Heavenly Father. And I pray over these next weeks that you'll hold on to this uh, purse, pocket, bathroom mirror, somewhere, and, and spend some time letting your love be expressed in prayer. Amen.